just start that all over. Okay, try again. Hey everyone, um, welcome to the 2024 CDBG Public Services and Program Informational Meeting. It is Thursday, February 16th, 2024. And uh, this meeting will be recorded so that it can be shared online for folks who are not able to join today. Today, we'll go over um, introductions of both um, Key Ramsey County staff as well as the grant itself. We'll go over eligible activities of this funding opportunity, which are public services and owner-occupied rehab programs. Um, if you're looking for housing development funds, um, go to ramseycounty.us slash housing investments, um, and you'll find all the information you need on housing development. Um, we'll go over required materials and the solicitation timeline, and we'll uh, leave room for questions. All questions that are asked during this meeting will be recorded, documented, and then put online so that everyone um, everyone can see all the answers to that as well. So um, yes, we'll start there. Um, well, I wanna introduce you to Ramsey County's Community and Economic Development Department, or CED, that um, help with this uh, grant. Um, my name is Max Fuldusen. I'm the Deputy Director of Housing Development in CED. Um, we also have Kim Hansen, who has her camera on, and she is our um, planning specialist working on CDBG. And then we have uh, Tanisha Trice Johnson, who's our community development specialist working on single family homes and programs. Um, and so that really connects that owner occupied rehab portion of this um, funding opportunity. And then for those who have worked with Heather Posthumous in the past, um, she'll be back in 2024. And so you may work with her again um, on this grant as well. So what is CDBG? So the introduction to the Community Development Block Grant. So CDBG is an annual grant that Ramsey County receives from the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development, or HUD. Its goal is to create, um, is a community development source to create more vibrant and resilient communities for low to moderate income residents. Um, it has a wide variety of eligible uses. Um, Ramsey County has narrowed the um, number of uses it wants to solicit for in this year to match our consolidated plan and some of our other housing goals. This grant is usually about $1.2 million annually, and only 15% of that $1.2 million could be used for public services. The rest can be for um, owner-occupied housing rehab. So um, not a, a lot of funds available, but there are funds available. Um, all of the federal requirements for this grant can be found online at, if you Google 24 CFR Part 570 and you like to read federal statute on regulations, um, you're able to see all of those there. We'll go into some of them today that may, um, that may be triggered by a grant in these two categories that we're going to go over today. Again, um, the 2024 CDBG will only focus on certain eligible activities. If you're looking for housing acquisition costs or uh, land acquisition costs or multifamily rehabilitation dollars, please go to ramseycounty.us slash housing investments. This is, again, just for public services and owner-occupied housing rehab programs. So for the eligibility of this grant, one, you have to be a nonprofit or government agency to apply. Two, you have to be applying under an eligible activity category. So those are public services or owner-occupied housing rehab programs. And then uh, three, uh, my number is a little off there, but uh, submit all required materials. So we'll go over all of those pieces today. And again, all of this information can be found on ramseycounty.us slash CDBG. And I'm going to take us there really quick just to kind of guide us through that web page. Okay, so if I was to type ramseycounty.us slash cdbg, it would take me to this uh, webpage titled Community Development Block Grant. Here it tells us the goals of the program, the fun, how to apply. So this blue button will take you to the application page. Um, here we are today with this webinar. So it gives all the information on that. And then it gives a brief timeline of key dates. So the solicitation was published yesterday on February 15th. Here we are today on the webinar of uh, February 16th. 
Um, after this meeting and next week, early next week, we'll post the video for this meeting. And then next Thursday, we'll post the addendum or frequently asked questions documents. That'll be available to the general public. Responses are due March 15th at 4.30 p.m. And um, funding award decisions would be in early May. Then you can continue down, look at eligible projects. What are some of the other requirements? This is a really key document, and I recommend everyone review this, and we'll go over this as well today, but the 2024 CDBG Public Services and Program Solicitation Notice. This has all the detailed information that's in the application and all the requirements. Um, and then how to apply. You'll be applying on a uh, another website called Zoom Grants. You can take that blue button, and it'll take you over to Zoom Grants, um, and it's a free um, application, and you just create a login, and then you'll be able to submit all of your materials on one page. Um, so no need to email or anything like that. So um, just look out for that Zoom Grants button up at the top. The apply now. And then you can see past funding awards as well. So what was funded last year? And you were able to click on that and see, um, it looks like Hammer Residents um, received some home uh, homeowner rehab dollars um, for their scattered site program. Um, Slipstream applied for a manufactured home critical repair program where they're offering grants um, for manufactured homes to help repair. Um, Homeline applied for a tenant hotline and received funds. Keystone Community Services received food shelf. So you can look through that and see uh, the um, types of nonprofits that received funding and their award amounts and what, um, what kind of location and project they were as well. So that's a very key website, ramseycounty.us slash cdbg. I'm going to share back to my PowerPoint now. And if you have any questions during this, please just put them in the chat and we'll answer them during the question period. And then we'll record them all as well and document them. So please add, enter any questions into the chat. Okay, other eligibility. So um, let's say you're a nonprofit and you're going to apply in one of those eligible activity categories. Um, what else do you need to know? Um, all residents that you serve must be at, at or below 80% of the area median income. So um, that's really easy to look up and we have that in the solicitation notice or it's easy to look up online. Um, NeighborWorks has a great little chart. Um, Metropolitan Council has a nice little chart. Our RamseyCounty.us slash first home has a nice little chart where you're able to see um, the income of the area. So every, all residents that you serve must be at or below 80% of the area median income. Your service or program must be located in suburban Ramsey County. Here's the communities that are in suburban Ramsey County. So basically all of the towns, suburbs outside of city of St. Paul are eligible for this grant. The city of St. Paul has its own CDBG funding and operates its own um, solicitation process. Um, and if you have any questions on that, we can send the website there as well. Um, but again, this is just for suburban Ramsey County. And there's no limit on funding requests. So there's no maximum amount um, that you have to, that you can apply for. So just knowing that the total grant is approximately $1.2 million and that only 15% of that $1.2 million could be used for public services can help kind of shape your uh, request. Um, so if 15% of $1.2 million is about $180,000 total for public services, the rest would be available for owner-occupied rehab programs. A couple other uh, key pieces in the public services category, so eligible activities, now we're moving into public services. Uh, the public services must be new or expanded. So either it's a new program or you're hoping to serve more people than you did last year. So we really want them, um, those to increase the number of residents that you're serving. So let's say you're a long time standing program and you, last year you served 20 people. The new funding would allow you to serve 25 people. That would be, um, that would increase the number of residents that you served. The, new, the CDBG funds can't replace other state or local dollars, so other government funding. So really it's about an expansion of a program or creating a new program. We also have in the 2024 solicitation notice that is on the website, we have a list of all the eligible public service activities. Um, it's really broad. So it can include social services, legal services, food resources, um, childcare, 
um, workforce and employment skills, anything that kind of fits into that social service category and you're serving low to moderate income people in suburban Ramsey County could be an eligible public services. But double check the solicitation notice to see if your idea um, fits into those eligible uses. Um, ineligible public services include income payments directly to an individual or family, so no direct rental assistance and no political activity, so no lobbying or political organizing with CDBG dollars. Public service programs will be reimbursed on a per client basis. So we have a reimbursement spreadsheet that you would fill out quarterly. And so we'd wanna see um, the per client costs um, and that would include, um, we'd wanna see what's reasonable, allowable, allocable costs um, for either direct service costs indirect service costs. And within that direct service cost, we can split out personnel and non-personnel. So very similar to just, you know, another type of grant application. We'd want to see your different um, sources there, um, sources of funding that you're using for the program, as well as how do you plan to use uh, the public service dollars if awarded. CED will provide onboarding for data collection and reimbursement requests. So um, we will, if awarded funding, Ramsey County staff will meet with you to discuss how do we want uh, reporting done, as well as how to fill out the reimbursement request for. Um, going, I see one thing in the chat. We'll we'll mention it again in the um, during the question period. But um, under that, homeless services is a eligible um, service under public services and overnight shelters could be considered homeless services. So now we're shifting from public services to owner-occupied housing rehab programs. So all, so in addition to having to serve low to moderate income residents and be in suburban Ramsey County, uh, owner-occupied rehab programs must uh, serve owner-occupiers or homeowners, whether that's in a manufactured home, a condo, or a single family home. Um, they must be an owner occupier there. This could include weatherization programs, loans or grant programs for energy efficiency, exterior, interior renovation, or other rehab programs. So in the past, we funded Hearts and Hammers and they were helping uh, low to moderate income seniors paint the exterior of their homes. Um, Center for Energy and the Environment um, had an energy efficiency loan program for um, low to moderate income homeowners. And then Slipstream had a variety of rehab, loan, and uh, critical repair grant programs as well. Again, if you're looking to acquire property or rehab a multifamily building, please go to ramseycounty.us slash housing investments for the um, 2024 housing development solicitation. A um, couple other things to note about owner-occupied housing rehab programs. All rehab program projects must complete environmental review, lead compliance, um, bidding requirements, and other federal requirements prior to starting rehab work. So because this is construction, you're fixing a hole in someone's roof, you're fixing plumbing, you're adding a bathroom, those types of things trigger other kind of construction related requirements um, that are um, that get passed on from the federal government to Ramsey County and then to the sub recipient. Um, a local Ramsey County uh, ordinance would also apply to projects over $25,000. This is the Ramsey County Prevailing Wage Ordinance. And that basically means if you're doing a construction project, um, anyone that you um, hire there needs to make a prevailing wage. Um, this is a complaint-based um, system at Ramsey County. So if if the Ramsey County Attorney's Office gets any complaints about your construction because you did not pay prevailing wage, that would trigger, uh, that may trigger an investigation. We'd request all the payrolls. We do not proactively in this scale um, collect payroll to double check the prevailing wage ordinance. So it's really co um, a complaint-based compliance. Um, reimbursement may occur on, a uh, occur on a quarterly basis after work is complete. So you would turn in your reimbursement form and then have all of your backup invoices for the work that was complete um, during that time as well. And no more than 20% of the subgrant here can go to personnel costs. So let's say you're applying for a housing rehab program. You can't use more than 20% of your uh, 
um, costs for like the administration of the program. So um, think about that in your grant application as well. And then CED will provide onboarding for data collection and reimbursement requests in 2024 for these types of programs as well. Um, okay, what are the required materials? So applications must be submitted in Zoom grants. So again, you hit that apply now button on the website and it brings you to the Zoom grants. You create a little login for yourself and um, you have to enter, you have to respond to all the questions listed there. Um, and then there's some required attachments. One is the project schedule and project narrative. This is a paragraph um, that helps you describe what you're applying for, your program, describe, um, describe who you're serving, your service area, what uh, service you want to, um, or activity you want to apply for. And then there'll also be a little budget information there as well. So there's a little uh, table that you can fill out related to your budget and your feel, and you're able to, um, Download that and amend it as needed as well. Attachment A is a series of questions about um, equitable development and equitable programming. And so um, it really helps us think about how are you connecting to Ramsey County's um, equitable development and inclusion plan or equitable economic competitiveness and inclusion plan. So we'd want to, we want to make sure that the thing that you're applying for connects back to Ramsey County's goals. So these questions help guide that conversation. Attachment B is an acknowledgement form. Basically it acknowledges that other federal um, regulations may apply to this funding. Attachment C is a lobby certification form that, um, that you're basically certifying that you have not lobbied any Ramsey County officials or the federal government for this funding. And then, um, Declarations form is similar to attachment C. It's just kind of um, declaring um, some of the ins and outs of the procurement and lobbying piece. And then there's an organizational capacity worksheet. So um, um, this will help us understand if you have the capacity to run the proposed program or activity. So how will your, uh, after you submit, how will your uh, application, how is your application scored? So your applications will be reviewed by a review panel consisting of county staff. The review panel has eight staff from different departments on it. Um, projects will be reviewed by the following criteria and scoring. So one, did, did you meet all of our pass fail requirements? Are you one, a nonprofit or government agency? Two, did you apply for an eligible activity? And three, did you submit all your required materials? Um, any materials submitted after the deadline do not count and may affect if you're scored or not. Um, application, so let's say you meet all those pass-fail requirements, you move on to evaluation and scoring. There's four scoring categories. One is based off of your project narrative. Um, the second one is based off of or your organizational capacity worksheet. And then the third is alignment with county strategic and selection priorities. So that really connects to that attachment A and those equitable programming questions. And then the fourth category is your project budget. So um, alignment and project narrative actually provide you the most points with organizational capacity right behind that and then project budget fourth. Um, so all of the required materials connect to a scoring category. The solicitation notice uh, goes into more detail about each one of these four categories and then um, and which materials kind of align with those as well. Now let's go through some key dates. So yesterday, February 15th, the Public Services and Program Solicitation was published. Um, on February 16th, we are providing this informational webinar. Uh, next Thursday, February 22nd, all questions are due and we're gonna publish the FAQ. So if you have any questions of clarification around this solicitation, um, please email us that and we'll put that in the chat as well. And, um, and then we'll publish those for the general public so that everyone can see the same answers even if they weren't able to attend today. Um, so please get any questions in either today or by next Thursday, February 22nd. Um, all responses are due on March 15th. And then on March 16th, we'll begin re the review of your applications. 
by April 5th, we'll make internally, we'll make um, recommendations for project selections. And then, and then we have to enter in our recommendations for project selections into a 30 day public comment period and public notice. So if you are to be included in that public notice, we will let you know right around April 5th. And then um, the 30 day public comment period ends on May 6th with a public meeting so that the general public has a time to comment on any project selections. And then this would go to the HRA board for approval. They would consider our recommended project list on May 7th. That same week, we would send notifications of your award out and the CDBG funding would become available no earlier than July 1st. Um, usually we expect to see uh, funding in July and then we can start drafting agreements in July or August of that year. Um, this might be a little different this year because there is no federal budget yet, um, and these are federal dollars. So um, right now, Washington is on a basically a month-to-month -month continuing resolution budget, and um, until they finalize a budget, this funding may uh, get delayed, and funding may not be available until August or September or even later. Um, every year is a little different depending on Congress. And so that completes the application. I'm sorry, that completes the presentation. And um, we're here today to answer any questions. This again, this informational meeting and the will be posted online. And then the FAQ will also be posted online after the meeting. Again, please um, get any questions to us um, either today and we'll put them in the chat or over email to us. I will write Kim and I's email into the chat now in case you want to kind of sit with the um, uh, questions a little more and sit with the application material before you ask anything. Um, but yeah, it's an open time now. Hey, Max, it's, it's, yeah. uh, Kim, it's Kimberly. Oh, sorry. No worries. <laughs> I knew that too. Okay. They made me, yeah, they made me do it. There you go. I had a question. Yeah. It looks like last year there was a community improvement category, and that's not in this year. Is that the case? Yes, that's not in this year. So usually um, infrastructure and public facilities is an allowable use of CDBG. We are not soliciting for that use in 2024. Okay, thank you. So then the public service category is more um, direct service to low-income people? Yes. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Um, we have a question in the chat um, from Lynette. If there is lead in any project that has to be addressed first, if so, is that included in the grant? Um, let's say, let's say you're applying for an owner occupied housing rehab program and you want to, um, replace windows in 20 homes across suburban Ramsey County. Um, one of the requirements is that a lead assessment is completed on that home. This affects homes, uh, built prior to 1978 when, um, lead based paint, um, stopped being used. So um, if your home was, was, if the home you're intending to rehab was built before 1978, there would be a lead-based um, assessment required. A team would come out, the fee in 2024 is $435 to review the, um, to do an assessment. They do swabs and um, test for um, hazardous levels of lead. Um, if hazardous levels of lead are found, then they would need to be abated. Um, often this just re um, often this just means um, stabilization of lead paint, 
and there's specific ways to do that. Um, that $435 can, can come out of the grant amount and you can consider that in your um, application. So let's say you were like, I thought I was only gonna apply for $100,000, but now I know that for the five homes that I wanna do, um, there's $435. So I'm gonna add that fee onto the um, grant amount. For public services, um, if you're just providing direct services to low to moderate income residents of suburban Ramsey County, there's no lead requirement. So it's really about a, uh, it's really about that kind of rehab or uh, of a physical location built before 1978. Okay, thank you, Mac. Um, um, just just a quick question. Um, mm -hmm. Is this a complete reimbursement grant? So like, can I, you know, can the work be done before, you know, um, this grant is due? Um, no, the work cannot be done before the grant is due because of federal requirements regarding the environmental review. So, um, so let's say you're awarded funds for housing rehab and, um, you cannot start that work, um, until, Ramsey County provides you with the environmental review. Um, lead compliance has been started and um, there's some bidding requirements as well. So um, let's say you're gonna use a series of subcontractors to do drywall or plumbing or something. Um, there's some bidding requirements there as well. So um, to follow federal regulation, uh, work cannot commence until uh, those components have been completed. After that work has been completed, um, then you can get reimbursed for it. We can discuss um, after award if a advance makes sense for the work after you meet all federal regulations. Um, but mostly this is a reimbursement after the work has been completed and all federal regulations um, have been met. Okay, thank you. Uh, we have a question in the chat. Would group homes for adults with disabilities fall under the owner-occupied category? Um, so it does not, I am imagining that the residents of the group home do not own the home, so they would not be owner-occupied. Um, but it could be a like a housing rehab program, right? So like um, so let's say it's like the program is the rehab of six group homes within suburban Ramsey County. Um, it's CDBG eligible. Yes. Well, we're just at uh, 1201. If there's any other questions, now's the time. Otherwise, we'll wrap up. And all questions that were asked today and any that we receive over email will be added to an FAQ document that will be posted at the end of uh, Thursday, February 22nd. Okay. Well, thank you so much for your time. And um for bidding purposes, we have to have more than one contractor. Yes, there are federal requirements about how many bids you have to receive. Um, so you have to receive a bid from more than one contractor. If if no contractors bid and only one bids, then um, there can be some documentation of that process. And um, yes. Okay. Thank you so much. And please email Kim and I if you have any questions that um, you'll find our emails on the solicitation notice on Zoom grants or in the chat here today. Thank you so much.